24 hours ago, I was super weirded out, but just as curious about the Greek alphabet. But right now, I'm about to test my skills by reading a full page of The Little Prince in Greek. Or at least, I hope I will. The Greek alphabet is freaking incredible. It inspired so many future generations and literally changed the way we share information. And that's why today I want to explore it to the fullest and actually learn it. At least pretty well. But let me tell you, what past me didn't know is that this whole process is going to be very, very confusing. Last time when I tried learning Tengwar, the Elvish alphabet, my goal was to write it. But this time, I just wanna read. I want to read Greek. Okay, uh, welcome. Uh, it's very late in the day. I hope I can do this within those couple of hours. Yeah, I don't even know where to really start right now. I guess I'll just fire up my PC and uh, we'll go from there. But what I do know is that I'm gonna put on some Greek, maybe even ancient Greek music on YouTube. That should be fun. And I'm gonna update you along the way. So I started with a few YouTube videos, specifically this introduction to the Greek alphabet by the channel TFTST. And I have to say, the professor had a great attitude, was using mnemonics to teach his students, and I learned a lot of English names for Greek letters. Yeah, unfortunately so. You can probably imagine that the English names for Greek letters sound very different from the real thing, especially from the modern Greek alphabet. So I had to find something a little bit more accurate. And right from the start, it was so weird. Just listen how beta is pronounced in modern Greek. Vita. And then we have zeta, eta, and theta. Right? Zeta, eta, theta. At this point, I knew I had to explore this topic further because it must be a bit similar to how English pronunciation changed throughout centuries. Of course, not exactly, but, well, it's important to know that the current English pronunciation of the Greek letters is based on their ancient versions. So what I mean is you can just hear the difference. You see this? Um, this is probably Greek alphabet in Greek. So I know that that's an E or an E sound. Those are L's, but I don't know what's that. This of course looks like V, but probably isn't. But then, uh, oh, so that's an A, so it's L. That's an F, I know that much. But uh, yeah, what? Uh, how would you even read this? I have no idea. So that's where I'm at, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna read through this page, those two pages actually, and later I'm gonna just search some YouTube tutorials. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Later on, I tried going through this 40-minute monster, and it was supposed to be a compilation of all videos on the topic by GreekPod101. And while it was a pretty good experience, it was actually a lie. Because like, two or three episodes just weren't there. I don't know why, but... Later, I had to think extra hard about the letters which weren't included. But I did it, and I took a little break afterwards. Well, this little break turned into a long one, so I just came back to the challenge at 1 a.m. And at that point, I only had enough juice left in me for one more hour of reading. Okay, so um, I've been learning for a, for a bit, yeah. I've watched over an hour, way over an hour of videos, um, and I'm still reading the main article on Wikipedia on the Greek alphabet, and I've opened like eight more, and I have to say, it's all very clear to me. I have no confusion. Okay, no. I'm more confused than ever before. Not necessarily just because of the letters, 
but because of the evolution in history of it. So that's something that I'm gonna explore later after I'm done with this challenge. But yeah, I just have to figure it out and uh, it's gonna take me a while. So I'm gonna take a little break and I'm gonna come back to it later. Also, this shit absolutely slaps. <laughs> well, the next day was bound to be interesting. Eight hours of work during this 24 hour period and a final test of my skills all on 5 hours of sleep. Also, let's talk about that for a while. If your native language uses the Latin and even probably the Cyrillic alphabet, you could probably learn the Greek one in like one evening, in one sitting basically. What I wanted to accomplish though was, first of all, learn both cases, the upper and the lower one. Second of all, learn about the changes that occurred in the script over the past two millennia and third of all, I went to master it for life, not just for a couple of days. So that's why I gave myself 24 hours. Anyway, I came back home, I ate, and you'll have to forgive me, but I just crashed. I didn't read or watch any more resources on the Greek alphabet. I guess, technically, it is within the rules, right? So after midnight, I was finally able to take the test. And what I picked was reading the first page of The Little Prince in Greek. Well, before I show you how it went, let me tell you about all the tidbits I came across during my research. I'll go through all 24 letters of this alphabet and give you one on each of them. And trust me, we're gonna go fast. Alpha. The first letter of the alphabet is the equivalent of A. So why did the ancient Greeks put it there? Well, they said it was the easiest sound to pronounce, as it doesn't require any tongue movement, and that's why it's the first sound that babies make. Beta, vita in modern Greek, but ancient people pronounced it more like English speakers do now, that is to say with a hard B. If you want to make the hard B sound these days, you have to put the letters M and P together, and there are even more inconsistencies which I had to learn. Gamma. Nowadays, it is pronounced more like a devoiced G, like gamma. Delta. In the past, pronounced with a plosive D, today it sounds more like delta. Because of that, the plosive D is made by combining the N and T. Also, its shape influenced the naming of the river delta. Epsilon. The name of this letter means simple E. It doesn't make sense nowadays because the diphthong that this naming convention was trying to differentiate this letter from is no longer in use. Zeta. The letter that influenced the Latin Z first looked like a very long I in serif font. And, oh, yeah. I think I didn't even mention that most of this alphabet is supposed to be derived from the Phoenician script, which itself came from the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Don't let nobody tell you that the modern Latin alphabet is boring, okay? Eta, in ancient times, was actually pronounced like an H, but nowadays it is an E sound. I mean, who came up with this? <laughs> Theta still represents the th sound and its representation in latin is how we got the th in english why couldn't they put it in slavic languages huh <laughs> also it used to be written with a dot or an x in the middle iota also represents the i sound and it used to have two forms a long and a short one referring to its pronunciation but it lost that around the switch of eras kappa represents the k sound but what is interesting is that the sarcastic use of the word kappa didn't originate in Greece, but in Japan, with its turtle-like water deity, so that's just pure coincidence. Lambda, nowadays pronounced lambda, it's so freaking similar to A in the uppercase that it makes me mad. Yeah, that's my fun fact. Mu, pronounced me in modern Greek, actually came from the Egyptian hieroglyph for water, and that's where the letter M comes from. So cool. New, pronounced ni nowadays. It's so confusing because its lowercase version looks like the Latin V. 
I had to focus a lot to remember that, being so accustomed to the Latin alphabet, but I think I have a Greek mode in me now, in which the correct pronunciation comes out pretty naturally. Xai represents the Latin X sound, although it looks like the Chinese number 3. We'll get to it a bit later though. Omicron, literally meaning small o. Now, try to guess how a big o would be called. That's right, omega. That's so cool to me. Pi, the most famous Greek letter, is actually pronounced P and comes from the Phoenician letter Pe. Rho, it retained its shape in the Cyrillic alphabet and that's why the word motor in Russian looks so funny to me. Always. Sigma has two different versions, one for the middle of a word and one for the end of it, although the letter, lunate sigma, as it is called, used to be the default version of this letter in the Middle Ages when the Greek alphabet still only had one case. Tau, it was based on a character that looks like the modern X. Oh man, the X saga continues. We'll get to it in a second though. Upsilon went through so many changes in pronunciation, from U to E to the modern one E. When it was introduced to Latin, it was in the E stage, but because the sound wasn't native to Latin, it represented E or U. That's why in some languages, like French and Polish, the letter Y is referred to as E Greg. Get it? Greek I. It blew my mind when I first discovered it. Phi, representing F, could have been based on another letter, Koppa, which sound was more similar to K than to P or F. Kai, our X saga comes to a close. Basically, this letter was always a sort of K or H sound in Greek. However, some Western variants of the Greek alphabet, for example in Sicily, didn't have the letter Xi and instead used Kai to represent the X sound. And the Romans took it from there. That's why our modern X looks like the Greek Kai and not Xi. Xi represents a weird cluster, eh? Although it looks like Poseidon's trident and sounds accurate to his name, right? Poseidon, Psy, but that's not really its origin, unfortunately. It was probably taken from Phoenician, but we can't be certain about that. And Omega, it used to be written like that, with the break on the side. Yeah, it comes from the original Omicron, and in that, it was not a part of the original Greek alphabet. It was introduced in the late 7th century BC and even got adopted into the Latin and Cyrillic alphabets, but didn't catch on. Okay, we are done. Thanks so much for sticking with me throughout my discoveries over the past 24 hours. And now, let me read some Greek little prints. Don't expect too much, as it is my first time reading Greek, but with that said, here's me at 2am. So welcome to the challenge part. It is 1am, um, so yeah, great time to do some Greek. I hope I'm not gonna embarrass myself. That's my goal, so let's begin. And uh, excuse my accent, of course, I haven't had the chance to learn it so far. So first of all, the name of the author is Antoyan de Sain Exupéry. If I read it correctly, um, the little prince is Omikros Prikipas. Prikipas? Should be alright. But basically there's gonna be a lot of lowercase because yeah, it's not ancient Greek. There is a version in ancient Greek on the internet of the little prince, but yeah, that's that's on a whole another level. So yeah, let's do that for now. Otan imoyen akoni exi chromo eida mia perohi. What is that? Oh my god! Totally forgot what that is. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna use my lifeline. Of call a friend, and my friend will be. The dictionary. Zeta. Okay. That's the only chance I've got. Okay. Once again. Otan imoin akomi exi chrono eda mia hiperohi 
vida minha e pero ri zoografia zoografia sounds like zoology zoografia maybe not é na biblio guia to parfeno dasos I feel like a two-year-old child reading a new alphabet every time. But it's cool, it's part of the process, so... It must sound very awkward for native speakers. I'm very sorry for you guys. Either way, let's go. Um, I was in such a good place before, okay. Oi, eha, tong, titlo, alifines, historias, edeigne, ena, terastio, Fidi to boa poi kata pro poi kata pro hize kata pro hize kata pro hize kapoyo agrimi na ena antigravo 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 que inis tis so, grafias. There are probably many exceptions in Greek, and so what I'm reading sounds maybe technically correct, but definitely not very native. So, well, if I had a week to learn all that, I would probably be a lot closer to mastery, but for now it's cool, anyway. Eto biblio e oi poes Katapinorin ti dea tois olokliri horis na ti masisoi. Istera, istera sounds familiar. Istera kafos de M and the P is probably a B, right? If I remember correctly. Kafos de Boroing pia na koin koini koini foin vifi 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 zon vifi zon tai de hypno gia exi mines mehri va na hone honepsioin last one last one let's go Eto hastika tote poli pango otis. No, stis, stis. Pango stis. Pango stis peripeteyes oti zoigla kai meti seira moi petuha petuha na skaroso tin Proti moi so grafia me ena chromatisto modivi modivi ti so grafia ip ip arif moi arif mon ip arif mon itang kapos eto etsi itang kapos it's good night everybody and that was it if you are a native greek speaker and have any notes feel free to leave them down below but most importantly i hope i gave you at least a bit of motivation to finally learn the skill you want to acquire for the longest time now either way i'm super happy that i can read the greek now at least semi well and who knows, maybe next time I'm going to read The Little Prince in the ancient Greek version I mentioned. I will have to invoke my inner Plato, but it should be easy enough, right? <laughs> Either way, thank you so much for watching. Alpha and Omega, it's all over, basically. <laughs> I wish you a great rest of your day or night, and see you next time.